Hello everyone and congratulations that you have completed this course and all the modules. So now it's time to conclude and summarize. Uh, so what we studied in uh, past few days or if you have finished in just one day, that's, that's uh, ultimate. So let's go one by one like what we studied and we'll see. So we started with the DCS uh, architecture and then we saw like how DC, what components are there in DCS and uh, how it is uh, look like uh, how many architectures are there how many uh, how many types of architectures are there how can we place all these dcs in purdue model then we saw some type of dcs examples also like from uh, siemens then from uh, yokogawa and delta based structures also we saw some uh, scada based architectures like uh, zone based model so now i think if you see this zone based architecture you will understand by why why these zones are there so to uh, check what type of communication is happening among uh, these zones then uh, we also saw about the building automations it might be new for someone that if you have not worked in building automation but now you have knowledge of building automation like it has a one uh, air handling box then we have batch reader we have access controller so this is how uh, it looks like now you understood that uh, bacs building automation is also an ot we studied about sis overview so why SIS is so important, why it is so critical, uh, that's why triple redundancy is there. We also got to know about the IoT systems, IoT overview, so uh, why, what is edge computing. Uh, when it comes to the computing, it is spread over the complete network from bottom to top, so that's why the computing is distributed on the complete network, that's why it is called edge uh, computing. Then. Uh, we learned about the Purdue model, so um, it starts from the level 0 and goes to level 5. Sometimes we keep uh, safety zone as a separate, sometimes we keep, uh, if there is only SIS system, then we keep uh, safety critical uh, systems in the level uh, 0 also. Uh, what is the requirement of these levels? So similar type of cyber security controls you can implement on a single level. Then we studied about how OT is different from IT. We went through the performance requirement. We went through the availability requirement. We went through risk management requirements. We saw system operation requirements. We we saw resource constraints, communications, change management. So, so we went one by one, one by one through all the topics and we understood what is the real difference between OT and IT. So now if someone asks us, we have plethora of terms we can quickly make him or her or them understand what is the uh, difference between then prior to moving to cyber security we try to learn about the cyber attacks what happened in our history and what was the causes in some cyber attacks were very simple it was very simple some attacks were quite advanced so a special malware were designed was were designed to uh, attack so th this is how we understood like from uh, old to oldest to latest cyber attacks like uh, colonial pipeline also we studied then we saw what could be anatomy of cyber attack so once we understood the attack then we we tried to understand what components we need to secure so once we understood that what components we need to secure then we need to understand how these things can be secured so we should go for the defense in their principle uh, what is defense in depth principle? By putting a multiple layer of uh, cyber security features for each each level, we can uh, create a really uh, defense in depth architecture, which is uh, tough to pen penetrate by the adversaries, which will need a very high resource and compute power and skill to invade those systems. So if it is a uh, pretty well designed with defense in depth principles, then we saw a sa sample uh, network architecture and also the uh, common uh, zones like basically in OT we keep manufacturing zone, cell security zone. Then in uh, then we have enterprise zone also for the IT communications for business purpose requirement. Once all these things base was done, then we studied about the foundational requirements as per six two four four three. So there there were seven requirements. Uh, first was like identification and authentication. We learned about what is the identification, what is authentication, then types of access control. We also saw, we also learned about the use control, what is the purpose of use control. So some examples we studied here like non-reproduction, time synchronization, auditing requirements. Uh, then we moved to the FR3 that was the system integrity. So whenever integrity or confidentiality comes into picture, it is all about the encryption. So we learned about two types of encryption, uh, symmetric, asymmetric. Then we learned about uh, what type of encryption and where we need to implement these things. 
so then confident data confidentiality it is also about the encryption and there are other things like restrict access to data implement data retention policy then develop and implement the cyber security program so all these are part of the data confidentiality then we read about the restricted data where we understood about the segmentation network segmentation why we do segmentation what components are required for doing say network segmentation we learned about the firewalls vlans then uh, timely response to event is the another fr we learned about uh, continuous monitoring how we can generate those logs and or events then we can uh, create a system which can do the timely response as well and last fr was the resource availability so here we talked about to enhance the availability of the system so that it can defend any of the de denial of the service attacks as well so resource availability we studied once it was done then we went to another module that module was about the basic technologies what we can implement so started with asset management then we studied about uh, segmentation In segmentation i think uh, we studied uh, two three times segmentation so now it is clear for everyone then we learned about network discovery why it is important and what type of protocols are used in network discovery technologies like basically icmp lldp or snmp and then we learned about the intrusion detection systems types of intrusion detection system type of detection mechanism in intrusion detection system difference between ids and ips so ids is installed in a sideline in a parallel we can say but uh, ips installed in the uh, series we learned about the secure remote access so what type of technologies we can use for secure remote access uh, why it is required what what it reduces it reduces mttr then uh, we saw one example from uh, clarity we studied about seam solutions we studied what is the purpose of the seam solutions or what type of roles a seam solution handles then we studied about seam like how how it can work what is agent deployment and finally we studied about the endpoint protection what type of endpoint protection is there uh, how the system matured in the evolution journey and uh, now it is quite mature so this is how we completed our course and i think it enriched your knowledge uh, to a little bit at least so now uh, now your task is to just keep on learning these technologies keep on trying reading the books you can always go for uh, finding the new things related to asset management or related to uh, intrusion detection system so we need to upskill ourselves we need to learn things we need to keep on applying create a virtual machine uh, deploy these solutions virtual machines are also free of cost available using virtual box you can Im install windows server windows 10 see learn about active directory learn about uh, patch management solutions by uh, wsas so uh, we need to now do hands on experience hands on learnings also we need to learn about the standards like iec 62443 nist 882 go search on all the platforms nowadays knowledge is available everywhere uh, once you learn these things they start including in your uh, resume and and uh, start building concepts about that start building principles about that and then uh, try to learn wherever you get opportunity try to uh, include cyber security uh, aspect whenever you speak uh, uh, about something try to add cyber security aspects try to think with the cyber security aspects about because uh, nowadays cyber warfare has uh, been becoming uh, very 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 fierce and uh, if you see the current state of the world there are many cyber security acts uh, cyber security intrusions or cyber attacks are happening on the critical infrastructure so that was the motive of this course to increase the awareness of cyber security at least to understand what is the cyber security for industrial purposes so i wish you good luck for your uh, uh, career and journey so uh, let's wrap up this course thank you everyone have a nice time ahead